morning you guys it's Karen and I asked in quite a few places if you would like a video on my experience with keto so far which I have to start by saying is extremely limited in that I tried it for three days but I was only I would say fully keto on one day because of mistakes that I made and things that I thought didn't have carbs in um, and I did check to see if I was releasing ketones and on one of those days I was um, however I think it might be interesting to you to know why I didn't do keto in the past despite it being suggested to me, why I've changed my mind, what my plans are going forward if I'm going to do it um, and what I experienced in doing it just for a few days. Bearing in mind this isn't any kind of tutorial, it's just me telling you my experience because I am definitely new to this. Although you guys know what I'm like, I have done a lot of research, I've I've watched a lot of lectures, I've spoken to my GP, I have done a lot of research myself. So I've got my notes in case you see me looking down. Okay, so why did I not think it was suitable for me? Number one is because I am the fussiest eater ever. Um, not so much now as I was say five years ago. And I would say that I'm now no longer, no longer have a food phobia or maybe I don't not have it. I just don't have it as much as I used to. Um, it's something that Kev has helped me get over. It's something that I had very intensely when I met Kev and I've had most of my life um, and I thought about doing a separate video on that actually to give you all the details I've had many food issues throughout my life and what is left is that I am there's a lot more food that I can eat now there's things that I would never have eaten before but I'm extremely fussy and I've got a particular taste I don't like chickpeas kidney beans those kind of things um, and the keto to me was very meat focused and dairy focused and I'm trying to be more vegetarian um, and it's not to say that you can't be vegetarian on keto because you can but it's definitely more difficult if you have if you are fussy like me another reason was that I wanted to make a a lifestyle change I didn't want to go on a diet I wanted to do a lifestyle change that would be something I could do forever and I didn't and I'm not sure I still do see keto as being forever I might change my mind on that if I go ahead and do it the other thing I was concerned about was my cholesterol and you know even more so recently I'm waiting for an echocardiogram to look at this heart problem that I've got the left ventricular hypertrophy and I know that I've got high cholesterol I know that I've got high blood pressure both are genetic they're not from food they are genetic because when I was um extremely skinny and eating a completely different diet I still had high blood pressure um, and I have tried to affect both of those with eating to be fair I've not tried the keto yet to affect those but I was worried about those and I looked into research um, comparing or talking about the effects on your cholesterol and the effects on your blood pressure and a lot of the research I looked at said it can have benefits and it can actually improve blood pressure and it can improve cholesterol but you need to eat healthy keto not what sometimes is called dirty keto I believe so you you're not going to get a good cholesterol result or blood pressure result if you're eating um, you know constantly eating cheese and bacon and cream and the things with saturated fats in them and the final reason I was put off is simply time I knew that to do any kind of lifestyle change or any kind of diet um, or food challenge or food um, change I needed to research it I couldn't just say I'm going to try keto next week yeah I'd need to figure out what Kevin and I were going to eat for dinner every night what I was going to have for lunch every day um, and that takes time that takes time to try recipes like I said because I'm a fussy eater because a friend of my mine actually did keto and she did literally just go I'm going to do keto on Monday and bought a 30 day meal plan bought the shopping that went with it and followed that meal plan I couldn't do that because I would guarantee you that half of it at least I wouldn't eat um, and so yeah I knew that I needed to put a lot of time into researching recipes and what I was going to eat and listing down the foods that I could eat um, etc etc so those are the reasons why not so why have I changed my mind I've changed my mind I suppose the number one reason is because I'm desperate you could say um, I have tried every other way of losing weight and it's just not happening and I really don't feel comfortable in the weight that I am at the moment. I'm a lot heavier than I was, than I have been for most of my life. I have been heavy before and, and lost the weight, but I just don't seem to be able to get in the right 
frame of mind because I feel like along with losing my food phobia I have become a food a foodie I love food and I love healthy things I do I love salmon and you know avocado and all those kind of things but I eat too much of my too much salmon I eat too much too many nuts and things like that so I was desperate so I thought you know what let me have a look at keto because like I said a friend of mine did it she was having good results let me see what it's all about and, and have another look into the research and listen to some lectures from doctors and look into some you know research studies etc etc um, and I also went to the GP to be honest I expected the GP to be very anti keto because I don't know I, I suppose I didn't think that he would have looked into it but he was aware of it and he said that he was happy for me to try it but again it was with my blood pressure and cholesterol it would he would be concerned with me eating bacon and eggs constantly cheese constantly cream constantly um, that it would work um, for me if I ate the healthy fats um, which in a way puts me off because like I said there's no I do like salmon and avocado and there's a lot of healthy fats I like but not enough to cover breakfast lunch dinner um, because I do also like cheese cheese would be my number one really that I probably should avoid and cream I love cream as well so I checked all that with him and I thought you know what I'm going to give this a go now I know that I'm not going to be able to do it 100% healthy because like I said I, I'm so so fussy I think in order to be able to make breakfast, lunch and dinner, I'm going to need to have cheese in it. There's going to need to be cream there for snacks. Um, yeah, it's, I just don't have the taste buds to make this 100% healthy keto. So what I did was I cobbled together um, enough items that I thought I could have three days and eat in this lifestyle if you like i bought some testing strips for the urine although blood testing is really the only way to tell if you're, you're actually releasing ketones but to give you some idea you can use urine strips um i bought some mct oil to add to my morning protein shake and yeah just decided to do it for three days if i could and my husband did it at dinner time with me and he was bloody starving the poor thing <laughs> um However, I realised that I didn't do it correctly after I would look at, I'd already planned to eat, so corn stir fry was one of my evening meals. Um, so corn chunks with bean sprouts, peppers, mushrooms, soy sauce, ginger, garlic, you know, that kind of thing. So it's your typical stir fry, but with corn. And I love corn, but when I looked at it, it was, it had too many carbs. So I, it would have been better to use chicken. But like I said, I'm trying to, be more vegetarian so I was gutted that my I couldn't eat my corn well not I couldn't eat I did have it in a stir fry that night but it meant that that wasn't at the end of the day I wasn't underneath the I was only doing underneath 50 carbs but I think this pushed me to like 55 grams of carbs I can't remember what the other thing was that I oh you know the other thing was a vegetarian thing it was the I can never remember whether it's Linda or Stella McCartney. I think it's Linda McCartney, the veggie burger. So I was going to have a veggie burger um, and Kev was going to have his burger and with some salad on the side. And again, I looked at that and it's high in carbs. And so the vegetarian alternatives that I eat and enjoy are going to be off the menu if I did keto full time. Um, I didn't end up having that veggie burger actually. I had a burger, you know, instead Kev said, well, why don't you have one of my burgers? But it, I just didn't enjoy it as much as I would my, my veggie burger. So apart from those things, I stuck to the keto, if you like. So for breakfast, what I did is I had a, a pure protein shake. So I would normally have um, a protein sh shake for breakfast anyway. I always add peanut butter to it. That's my taste buds. But what I add to it that just makes it delicious is um, Options Hot Chocolate. Um, so that's obviously got some sugar in it. So adding that to it would have not made it keto. So I, I removed that and I added some MCT oil. And I can't say that I enjoy it. It's it's okay, it's bearable, but I've never liked just a protein shake. You know, like I said, the bit that makes it for me is the options hot chocolate, giving it that bit of sweetness. I've tried adding in stevia to these protein drinks, um, all different types of sweetener, erythritol, everything. Um, agave is what I normally add as well. Normally I have a teaspoon of agave and then a couple of teaspoons of the powder. So I just had a protein shake, a proper protein shake for breakfast. Um, for lunch, I didn't really change. I had my salmon and cauliflower rice. Um, my lunches are fairly keto anyway because I would have salmon and cauliflower rice or 
a mackerel and a boiled egg or chicken and avocado is something else I sometimes have for lunch mackerel and boiled egg you know I was okay as far as lunches go goes I didn't need to plan too much although I would sometimes have an egg mayonnaise on a really low carb bread or on a low carb roll and I like you know take out most of the bread or I just have one piece of bread something like that because I've always tried to reduce my carbs um dinners we had that burger with a salad we had the corn stir fry and what was the other thing we had oh we had steak and mushrooms for snacks i had strawberries and cream and salted peanuts there's a lot of people that think you shouldn't have peanuts but peanuts are the ones i like you know i do have also have pecans i do also have macadamias but peanuts are my favorites and I, there has to be some things in a diet or a change of eating that I really enjoy in order for me to stick to it. If I didn't, you know, if it was like, you can't eat peanuts, I just, I would struggle, I think, because every time I was a little bit hungry and I wanted a little snack or something with my, in the evening, I would have just a tiny little handful of, not even a handful, you know, like a little teaspoonful of nuts. And I really enjoyed that. And it's got the salt in it, which is actually quite good on keto. So that's what I ate for the three days. And I did not feel like I had the keto flu. Keto flu is what you get when you, if you suddenly switch to doing keto. This is another reason why I didn't want to automatically switch or immediately switch, not automatically, immediately switch because it shouldn't be so bad for me because like I said, I, I tend to eat a keto lunch anyway. And although I have carbs, I don't eat many. I've had cauliflower rice with any so when we have chili, I have it with cauliflower rice. So it shouldn't be too, I shouldn't get the keto flu too much because apparently you get the keto flu really badly. You feel awful if you are used to eating a lot of carbs, which I'm not. Day one and day two, I felt absolutely fine. I felt fuller than I usually do. Um, I wasn't looking for snacks as much. And what I have been tending to do over the last few months is when I want a snack and I'm like, oh, I really want something. I make myself a cup of tea. And so I noticed that I wasn't drinking as much, which is a downside for me. I need, I would need to, if I'm doing keto, you're supposed to consume more liquid. You need to be drinking a lot of water. And I wasn't, I actually got dehydrated. Whereas I'm normally constantly drinking my Redbush tea. On day three, I did feel pretty awful. Um, and in the afternoon, I had a really serious carb craving. Um, which I didn't give in to, but I, I couldn't really decipher whether I felt bad from the keto or whether I felt bad in the way I usually do with my headaches because they do, do give me that same sort of foggy brain and really bad headache. And one of the things you can get from this is headaches. And if they make my headaches worse, I'm not very good with, you know, a lot of people have said to me that they felt awful, but you need to push through. I'm not very good at pushing through. Um, I've felt awful for the last 10, 15 years and things are just starting to get better for me, headache wise and foggy brain wise. I wouldn't be prepared to go through that all again. I'd rather build up slowly to keto if that was the case. Um, you know, like start saying, right, every breakfast and lunch is keto and then add in dinner and then add in snacks, something like that. Something else that happened on day three when I was at the end of an hour's walk with Watson is I got a hypo. Now I get hypos anyway. I have something called hypoinsulinemia, which does give me low blood sugar. Um, and so I looked up on a diabetic forum and whatnot what they do and it was saying you can... If, you, if your sugar isn't too low, you can eat protein and that will convert and help you along or you just have to have sugar. And so I think it was the end of day three that happened. I did have some some of my um, glucose drink that I needed to, because I was starting to feel really, really shaky. Um, so that's something I'd need to watch out for and you know try and monitor. Though I lost three pound in those three days. And what I've been really surprised at is I did three days keto and then three days kind of non. I have been trying to eat more keto as in my lunches have been keto still, but my, like when I met my friend for lunch, for example, I would normally have um, chicken and potatoes, but I had chicken and pork. We then went and had some alcohol and rather than having cocktails, I had Bacardi and Coke. So not completely keto, but you know, more geared towards it. I have not lost any more weight in the last three days. So it was three days keto, three days non, and but I've not put that weight back on again either because they tell you that as soon as you stop keto, you put it all back on again and it's just water weight, etc. And I haven't put that weight back on. I've, that three pound has stayed off. It's only six days, but it didn't immediately go back on again and I didn't eat very well at the weekend. So I was really surprised at that. So overall, I think the three days was a success and 
I continued in my research and trying of recipes. Um, you know how I said I had burgers that night? I actually made some keto bread out of cheese and that was really, really nice. And so that kind of made it more of a meal. I made it a bit too salty in the end, but it was lovely. But it's not the type of bread that will last for days. You know, it will literally last that day and possibly the following day. Um, the other thing I made were some salted caramels and they are delicious. They're really nice. So if you've got a sweet craving, you know, there's something there. So then I started on my planning. So I knew that, you know, the, the, the few days after the three day trial, I wasn't going to be doing keto, but I wanted to gather together my recipes, write down all my foods, etc., to try and make it that I could say, okay, I'm going to do keto as soon as I've got everything together and I'm not going to I'm not going to be able to fall off the wagon because I'll have everything prepared because if I feel like if I've got seven meals at least that I can have for dinner hopefully more than that then there'll always be something there where I can go okay we're going to have this this and this you know rather than sitting there going oh what am I going to eat um so I wrote down a list of all of the keto friendly foods that I liked you know, all of the protein, all of the possible accompaniments. And then I kind of made them into meals. And then I listed things that I would eat for breakfast, things I would eat for lunch, things I would eat for dinner. Um, and then double checked it with my husband to see if he was happy with those choices and if he would want any carbs with them. And I printed off a lot of recipes for things that I couldn't figure out what to do. Like on a Friday night, we have had an Asda, Asda own curry for couple of years now it we used to always get an Indian takeaway and we stopped when we both lost our jobs and discovered these Asda's own curry and they're absolutely delicious so I have the tikka and Kev has the Buna but of course looking at them they are high carb so you would need to make your own and so I've got a recipe for a chicken tikka that I haven't yet tried yet but I'll be able to have that with cauliflower rice I wrote down all the things that I would need to replace so you know, at the weekend I'll have a Bacardi and Diet Coke and some crisps. I wouldn't be able to have those crisps. So instead I'll have my salted nuts, which I'll be fine with. Um, you're not really supposed to drink alcohol, but I will probably have um, a Bacardi and Diet Coke on a Saturday night for sure. And actually the the worst of the um, alcohol on keto is beer and wine. And I'm not somebody that drinks wine, so that's fine. Um, you're not there's there's some ketos that tell you not to drink diet drinks but i drink a lot of diet coke and that's something that i would need to keep on doing to stick to this so i feel like i'm or i felt like i was ready and i have started today so the challenges that i so today is day one but there, there's still challenges for me that i need to get over um i find that the biggest challenge is that there's a lot more shopping and cooking to do for us maybe not for everybody else if you were cooking meals every day then isn't there's not such a huge difference but we are very much a convenience family because all the time that is needed for Watson and that Kev gets in very late and so you know he doesn't get in till between seven and half seven and then he goes immediately out again so there isn't an awful lot of time to cook and have dinner um that's more of a quick thing for us during the week and so a lot of our meals were like we buy this ready-made chili and have that with a packet rice that we just throw in the microwave it takes like 10 minutes we did the same with spaghetti bolognese a ready-made spaghetti bolognese put on some pasta in 10 minutes and then that's us done i need to find things to replace that and the things that i'm replacing it with at the moment are things like cheese omelette so the extra shopping and the extra cooking i don't know if i will adapt to that or not we shall see um because Kev, I should mention that Kev's the chef in this house. I'm not the one that does the cooking. I do everything else, but not the cooking. Occasionally I'll do it, um, but I'm the one that's doing all the enrichment games for Watson and whatnot. It's just the way that we work. It has always worked well that Kev does the cooking. And like I said, he's not in till 7, 7.30, and then he's leaving again at 8 to go to golf practice. Ice cream, I found a challenge, and McDonald's, I found a challenge, and they're both kind of intertwined. I went to McDonald's um, on the day I took Watson for a walk, and I had... A quarter pounder with cheeseburger but without the bread and that was absolutely fine as far as food was concerned but normally if i go to mcdonald's i buy a caramel frappe i absolutely love them um so obviously that was off i mean it's not a bad thing really is it will hopefully teach me to be healthier but that did i felt hard done by by that and the same with the ice cream when watson and i were walking we were at arthur's seat and there's usually an ice cream van there and i would normally buy an ice cream and share it with Watson and I just felt like that was gone and I was like oh we, we do that a lot myself and Kev when we take him for walks in the summer we'll buy ice creams and sit and share them with Watson and so that is no longer going to happen and that's something else I'd need to 
figure out. I mean, there's no, I can't take my own ice cream, can I? And they don't sell keto ice cream, you know. Um, little things like that, you know, they're the things that I don't know whether I, I would be able to stick to keto. Don't get me wrong, if I'd have had an ice cream, by the way, I wouldn't then have bought a frappe. I'm not that bad. <laughs> I would have just had the ice cream. So the final thing to talk about is what now? Well, today is day one of me being organized, if you like. So I have all of my recipes. I have made a plan for what we are eating Monday to Thursday this week, um, because that's as much shopping as I wanted to do, if you like, and as, as much as the dates, the use by dates would allow. Um, so tonight we're having salmon and scrambled eggs. Um, tomorrow night, I don't think it's cheese omelet. I think Wednesday night's cheese omelet. Um, I'm going to make a stuffed peppers with beef mince one night and I can't remember what the fourth one is. Um, but I've got everything planned for this week and I'm going to see how the week goes. I'm half a mind to do Monday to Friday keto and then not at the weekend, which I know that a lot of you will strongly disagree with. Um, so I'm sure somebody will leave a comment saying you shouldn't do that because I know all of the reasons that it's not good to just do it Monday to Friday because you'll never, your body will never get into the fat burning. It will if I eventually decide to do keto and this is my way of doing it. Um, if I said I was going to be 100% just now, I would probably let myself down if that makes sense because I need to see if I can do it, if I can do it full time because I found the three days last week not challenging because I was hungry but challenging in finding something to eat and finding something to eat in the evenings and finding something to have for breakfast because I'm bored sick of this smoothie but I don't want to have I don't really like bacon and sausage I don't really know what to have for breakfast I'm having egg at other times during the day um I might make myself some granola um and I thought I might even have just like nuts in milk but whether or not that'll fill me up or not how that'll work out I don't know and like I said it's extra time for cooking etc um, so I'm just going to see how this week goes, but I'm definitely going to stick to it for the five days of this midweek, if you like, and see what happens. And if by Friday I'm still feeling well and I've thought of a few new things and I've been able to get to the shops to do more shopping for more meals and plan more meals for the weekend, then maybe I will just carry on with it because I do know eventually I'd, I'd have to commit to it or not because you know to in order to get your body to get used to burning fat for fuel rather than sugar um i'm fully aware of it like i said i know that a lot of people will be like no don't do that um but this is my way you know this is my way of, of knowing that i'll be able to to do it and like i said those three days worked for me i lost three pounds and i haven't put them back on so again i'll judge this week and see what happens and see if i lose weight and how much i lose and that kind of thing so let me know what your experiences are of keto. Um, I would be happy to hear tips and tricks on recipes, like what to eat for breakfast. I've, I have scoured lots of different sites and can't find anything for breakfast. I mean, there's a lot of things that you could cook. I'm not gonna cook in the morning. I don't have time in the morning. I get up and I've got a, a huge list of things to do. Uh, if I'm cooking dinner, and lunch I'm, I'm not then going to cook breakfast it's just not going to happen you know I need something that's a bit more convenient than that um but yeah happy happy to hear what you guys eat and if you've got a nice protein shake that would be good <laughs> so I hope this was interesting to you and I wish you well on your journey I will do another update if you like I will let you know how I get on if I'm sticking to it if I'm doing more than the five days if I did do the five days how much weight I lost etc um and also if my, I've got to keep an eye on my blood pressure as well because this can lower blood pressure and I'm on blood pressure medication so I need to keep an eye on that. Um, and I will at some point get my cholesterol tested and see how things are doing there but I need to wait until a, a little bit longer on it to, to see what effect if any that's had on it. So that's everything for now. Thank you so much for watching and I'll speak to you again soon.